Hi guys, uh, welcome to my second video. This one is about drawing mechanical objects, but it could also be applied to anything organic. I Just using things that I could find around my home, um, you guys can as well. So just think about what falls into that category, anything that could be used for making things, anything metal that could be mechanical, anything that has gears or moves, um, and then organic, pretty much anything you can find around you in nature, leaves, fruit, veg. Uh, bits of twig, wh whatever you fancy drawing, anything you've got, you, you know, if you've got plants or flowers, they would be amazing too. Um, in this video, I'm just going to be drawing um, this head from a screwdriver. Um, and it's really important to make sure that you've got what you're going to be drawing in front of you. I would also maybe take some pictures of it um, before you get started to put in your sketchbooks to just show that you've recorded what you're doing as well as your drawings. It gets you extra marks, counts on your assessment objective three. So worth including any photos that you could take of your object in that position. I just want to give a shout out to anyone in my year nine class who's following this video, trying to do this project and just email me if you need help after you've seen this video. So the first thing I'm going to look at is the placement of the object. So I like it that it's in this bit of, no, you can't see that, I'm just going to move it. I like this in this bit of sunlight here. Um, and I'm going to kind of leave it like that because it creates a really interesting shadow. Um, and that's something you want to think about when you're placing your object. Think about if you place it actually in a darkness, do you get like the same effect? So I can see that I've got these nice little bits of light here but it's going to be a totally different effect if I actually place it in the sunshine. So it's worth thinking about exactly where you're going to put it and what the light is like where you're putting it as well. So what we're going to do is going to be broken down into three basic steps. We're looking at proportion and shape, tone and texture. Each one of these kind of adds a different level of marks to what you're doing. I've also got in front of me some tools I'm going to be using, including basic things like pencil, rubber pencil sharpener. I've also got one of these blending sticks as well. In a different video, if you don't have a blending stick at home, I will show you how to make one just using some bits of paper. Okay. Um, but for now, we're going to get started on drawing this. So I'm going to first of all think about how big I want to draw it. Do I want to draw it actual size or am I going to scale it up? It could be if you've got a printer at home, you could, instead of drawing from life, take some pictures and put a grid on it and try drawing it from a grid if that's where you're more comfortable. But I would recommend to anyone having a go at drawing it from life because it build, builds up your skills. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is start thinking about the basic shape. And I'm just going to start by trying to draw this section on the top here. Um, just because that's where I feel comfortable starting out. And you can see I'm doing it a little bigger than actual size. So I'm thinking about um, the angles on it as well. I'm not being too precise because obviously I'm going really lightly to start off with. Um, and I'm then going to think about adding the bit on the side. Thinking about the angle that it's at and the fact that that makes it narrower. Not by loads. By a decent amount. I can then see this bit on the base here and that, that, that adds a bit on as well. I want to get as much detail as I can on even though I'm just going lightly to start with so I don't know if you can see these kind of little nicks in it here. I'm just trying to add those bits on just using my pencil and showing what angle they're at and where they're at. I can't see from the angle that I'm at any other sides of the screw head. So I'm just going to place the next part on. I'm thinking about what angle it narrows at, I'm trying to make sure it's even. I think that's not quite right. So I'm adjusting as I'm going along, making sure to constantly refer back to um, the object that you're drawing and not just be looking at your drawing all the time. I cannot stress that enough. Always make sure you're looking back at your object. Don't be afraid to adjust it. There's nothing wrong with making a mistake with what you're doing. As long as you don't see that mistake and go, oh well, it's too late now. You need to try and do something about it whilst you're in this light drawing stage. So again, I'm just going really lightly here. Now I want to try and make sure this is even. Now you notice here, this bit is not even, so 
looking at what I'm doing, this is where the rubber comes in handy. I'm just thinking about exactly how far up this bit comes and what I can see. So you can see this tiny little triangle, I don't know if you can actually see on the camera, um, just of metal there and it's got this kind of v-shape inlet and I'm looking at how steep of an angle that is and trying to make sure that what I'm getting up to this stage is on there as well. I'm now going to look at the size of each of these. So I think if I compare to my pencil, and this is something that artists used to do all the time, some artists still do, it's worth having a go, especially if you're drawing something small. The size of this, compared to the size of this, is very similar. It's about 50-50 in terms of proportion. So when I look at my drawing, I can see that it's not 50-50, therefore I need to make some alterations. So I'm just changing the proportion here, thinking, how am I going to do it? This bit's more complex to draw, so I should realistically be trying to shorten this end. So I'm just going to take the end bit off there. This is why it's really important to make sure that you are going light with your pencil, because you can rub it out. If you weren't, you would really struggle. Getting that ellipse on, so ellipse is just like a flattened circle. So I'm just seeing exactly what I can see, and it's very, very narrow. That's looking a little bit closer. It still needs a little bit of refinement, so... I think this is part, I'm just going to take off any rough sketchy bits here, just really lightly, so I can still see them, and so I'm adding in what I need to, again thinking about those angles. Trying to make sure everything's even. I might have to then adjust just where these little nicks are. Maybe put them on too early there. Because they are about halfway up the screw. This bit is kind of where it's really important that your pencil's a lot sharper than mine. Mine's kind of blunt at the moment, so it would definitely be worth me sharpening it. Um, because I've got quite a few pencils here, I'm just going to get a different one for the time being. If you have got different types of pencils as well, it's maybe worth experimenting with the different um, gradients in them. So at the moment I've got this 4B, it's nice and sharp here, uh, just from Doe and Graphic. And I'm going to start by very lightly putting what shading I can see on. So I'm going to put the shadow on as well. This is why you notice the sun's moved be really important to take some photographs before you start because you can then actually just refer to your picture instead of the changing light and what you're drawing. So I'm just going to start refining the edge, making sure now that this is as straight a edge as I can make it without using a ruler. And I'm just going to hold my pencil quite far up because this enables me to go nice and lightly with it. You can sort of see the texture of the marks I'm making there. I just want a very, very light tone on it to start with because nothing on it is really, really dark. So I'm getting my base tone on there. This bit, the side bit, is darker. 
So this side's going to need to be showing that shadow, that 3D form, by using a different tone. You don't want to be using the same tone for everything. This is where if you've got a blending stick, it's really handy. Um, I'm just going to bend that in. What it's doing is it's making it look smooth, not only by kind of smudging it, but also working it into the tooth of the paper. So you can see from here, the paper is kind of textured. Most paper is. Um, what happens is you've got little bits on the paper that come in and out. So the paper is kind of like this if you zoomed in on it with a microscope. And where you can see these white bits, that's where it's essentially going across the paper. And these bits are getting shaded. But the bits that go in in the paper are being left white because nothing's being worked into them. Using a blending stick, if you do it in small circles, you can make sure that you don't have any white gaps at all because your tooth of the paper is getting filled. Another way to do this would be to press really hard with your pencil, but we don't really want that in this scenario because you would lose um, a lot of uh, form. You, you wouldn't look, get your picture to look 3D if you were blending it or pressing really hard with your pencil from the get-go. So I want to add a bit of definition back in. One thing that a lot of students forget to do when they're blending a piece of work is they forget to work back into it afterwards. If you don't work back into your drawing after you've blended it, it loses all kinds of texture. And losing the texture, um, it doesn't look as realistic. So you need to work back into that. So I'm now going to start to add on these little speckled Kind of, I guess they're rust actually if I really think about it. It's bits of rust. And this is important to making it look realistic. I'm adding on that little dent there as well. And if you think your drawing's gone too dark, then don't be afraid to take away from some of it using rubber. If you go too light, you can always go back in with your blending stick. So, adding the details in and the, the darker parts is really important to getting it look 3D. Like I said, there's nothing that's really super dark here. But there's lots that's dark enough to get what we call low lights in. Low lights are the darkest part of a drawing. And if you don't include low lights, which is um, really dark, mid tones, which get lighter, and should include everything from that point onwards, all the way through to highlights where the paper's left white, then your picture's again not going to look 3D. So I need to make sure I'm including low lights, midtones, and highlights in my work. The next thing is looking, okay, I can see these highlights here. Where you can see white on the object, where the reflection is, that's where it's really going to stay white. So I'm going to use my blending stick here where I'm not actually blending any tones. I'm just using like the, the kind of lead on the end of it to make like a, a very light mid-tone. And as you can see, I'm not going anywhere really close to this area because this area here is where a lot of those highlights are going to be. And again, with this area here. So. I'm just adding in the details I can see now, the rust. And this point here really needs to be crisper, so I'm going in with my rubber 
it's a bit clumsy if you've got those rubbers that um you can get that are kind of um they're kind of like pencils uh, mechanical pencils mechanical rubbers then you know use those i've got one of those somewhere but i don't know where so i'm not using it for this video um, I'm just making this bit more pointed now. I'm putting on where I can see that it's darker. Very important. There's a little bit of a shadow underneath that I'm trying to maintain. But again... You don't want to be getting a scruffy outline on there. So I'm adding some of those darker tones in now. Just showing as much detail as I can, the rust. Ideally, you want to be doing a bigger drawing than this. This, Although the object is still quite small, um, the drawing should be much bigger to allow you to put more detail in. Ideally, I would spend a really long time trying to get this perfect. But as it is, I'm just trying to show you the basics of it. So, I guess maybe I'll do a time lapse one at some point so you can see what hours of work looks like. But that's not a promise because I got a one year old to look after. And his dad's a key worker, so all by myself in the day. There we go. So you can see I'm starting to get it to look more 3D. It needs a lot more work. But what I want to be trying to do is getting those little details on. Getting those highlights on. This is where either the working on the large scale or the mechanical rubber would come in handy. And I'm also going to get that shadow on now, I think. So the angle of the shadow has changed because the time of day has changed. been doing this video much longer than I intended to. Sorry. And I'm just going to put that on there. Leaving a little bit of a gap towards this end. And I'm going to blend the shadow away as well because it's that kind of shadow that's cast by twilight where... You, uh, it's you get a really soft shadow on it. So this is what we call a, a rough sketch. You guys, if you're working on your mechanical objects project, hopefully you're going to be spending a little bit more time on it. Uh, ideally, you want to try and spend an hour to three hours per, per drawing because that's where you're going to get the real quality. And me, I've spent a little over 19 minutes talking to you about this. If you've got any questions, I'll say again, please email me. Um, I'm only on the other end of an email. And uh, good luck, everyone. I will see you soon. Don't forget to keep your eye out for that video on how to make a blending stick if you don't have one. And if you're in one of my other classes, then feel free to have a go at this too with any object around your home because it will improve your drawing skills. Stay safe, everyone. Bye.